Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. After many, many months, through many requests from the Patreon's Quasar Commander, we found ourselves at the end of the World Legacy story. And what better way to cap things off than with the monsters the story takes its name from, the World Legacy. Fragments of the planet's power that lay dormant across the world, and with their power, great works of heroism can be achieved, as well as deeds of unfathomable villainy. At this point in our tale, Lee has once again tricked our heroes. Using Ningirsu's love for his sister against him, he offered up Galatea to the world legacies, having been transmuted into the guard dragons, so that the soul within the mechanical doll could be reincarnated. But it was not Ib that lay within, but Lee. And by usurping Ib's authority over the world legacies, began to call forth the power of the great darkness that lay beneath the earth. However, an assembly of heroes, some even newly reborn, come together to wrest control of that great power from this millennia-old malevolence. Don't go anywhere, because the grand finale is upon us, and we'll be covering the cards that bring the story to a close. Presenting World Legacy Explained. Today's episode is brought to you by my lovely patrons and the fine people over at Dragon Shield. If you want to protect your cards with the strongest scales on the market that even come with their own lore while supporting the channel, use my affiliate link in the description. So what's the deal with the World Legacy? Well, a majority of their main deck monsters are Dark Machines, meaning they have a pretty big overlap with Orcist. But the strange thing is, despite having a consistent type and attribute, these cards are more focused on supporting other archetypes in the World Legacy lore. While some will have minor connective tissue, allowing for some kind of World Legacy deck to be made, that's not really where their main focus is going to be on. So, for the sake of this video, I'll be including all of the Dark Machine World Legacy monsters. However, there are a number of spell and trap cards I'll be skipping over, because many of them are either explicit or implicit support for a different World Legacy archetype. Not only would they not mesh really well with the monsters shown here, I've probably already talked about them in another video covering that theme. Besides, I've already made my puns for those and I have to conserve my comedic juices. There's over 10,000 of these cards in the game for crying out loud. So, with that explanation out of the way, let's get to work on these worldly wonders. World Legacy World Key is a level 1 monster with 0 attack and defense, and it can discard a World Legacy card to give you an additional tribute summon during your main phase, but you can only gain this effect once per turn. At the start of the damage step, if this card battles an opponent's Link monster, you can return that monster to the extra deck. That extra tribute summon is going to become very relevant, since the rest of our world legacies are going to be on the higher end of the level spectrum. Though technically, this can be used to tribute summon anything, so I guess World Legacy Monarch isn't entirely off the table? Being a Neospatian Grand Mole for Link monsters is also pretty cool, though it is unfortunate that it doesn't bounce itself as well, so it is vulnerable to basically anything else. Seriously, if your sword can be broken by a Karibo, I think you need to consider getting a refund. World Legacy World Chalice is a level 5 monster with 0 attack and defense, and if any number of monsters are special summoned from the extra deck, except during the damage step, you can tribute this card to send those monsters to the grave. If this face-up normal summoned or set card leaves the field, you can special summon two World Chalice monsters from your deck, except copies of this card, and during your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the grave, you can banish this card from your grave to add a World Legacy card from your deck to your hand. So in World Chalice decks, normal summoning this with Imduck is one of the most important lines of play in your theme, but if you're looking to use this for its other applications, you don't have to worry about normal summoning it. It'll still be a deterrent to extra deck summoning, though it oddly doesn't negate the summon, and acts as a searcher for World Legacy cards on future turns. So if you need an on-theme monster, spell, or trap card, this cup is gonna be aces. World Legacy World Crown is a level 6 monster with 2,000 attack and defense that can be special summoned from the hand in defense position to your zone a Link monster points to. When a monster on the field that was special summoned from the extra deck activates its effect as a quick effect, you can tribute this card to negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. And if this normal summoner set card is tributed, you can add a World Legacy Spell or Trap card from your deck to your hand. So you'll notice some similarities with World Chalice here, letting you mess with extra deck summoned monsters and having an effect when it leaves the field. 
based on if you normal summon or set it. In its intended theme, Crusadia, it's really just another link climbing tool, though has that nifty negate on hand if you wanted to keep it on board instead. And while it might seem a tad wasteful to always special summon it using its own effect, since that bypasses the search, you have so many other ways to tutor out your world legacy cards that you aren't really missing out on much. So feel free to drop this out of your hand as you see fit. It's pretty good in Crusadia, but when it comes to the world legacy, this card isn't exactly a crown jewel. World Legacy World Shield is a level 6 monster with 0 attack and 3000 defense that's unaffected by the activated effects of monster special summon from the extra deck. Your opponent can't target your World Legacy cards in this card's column with card effects, also they can't be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. During your standby phase, if this card is in your grave, you can pay 1000 life points to special summon this card, then your opponent can special summon a monster from their hand or grave. Now that sounds very unwise. You front the cost and get what amounts to a giant butt, while your opponent gets the their best monster from their hand or grave. Heck, whatever monster is summoned is going to be able to affect shield because even if it's something like a synchro monster, it was summoned from the grave, not the extra deck. Though, thankfully, it will always benefit from its own targeting and effect destruction protection, so at least there's that. It's also nice that it can protect the World Legacy Continuous Spell and Trap cards that are common in Mech Knights, the archetype that released alongside this one. And speaking of which, while giving your opponent a monster in most scenarios is terrible, it does occupy a zone, which can help you summon out your Mech Knights from your hand, so it's not a total wash. But that won't stop me from trying to block this from my World Legacy's memories. World Legacy World Arc is a level 7 monster with 2500 attack and 500 defense, and can be counted as two tributes for the tribute summon of any monster. If any number of Link monsters you control are destroyed by an opponent's card effect and sent to the grave except during the damage step, you can send this card from your hand to the grave, then target one of those Link monsters and special summon it. And if your opponent special summons any number of monsters from the extra deck while this normal summoned or set card is on the field except during the damage step, you can send a monster from your deck to the grave. Wow, that is a lot to unpack. So right off the bat, this being two whole tributes can enable Ark and any other level 7 or higher world legacy to get their normal summon effects online, without itself necessarily having to be normal summon. So cheating this into play to set those up is going to be choice. But you're more than likely to use this for the hand trap effect, letting you recover link monsters lost to your opponent's effect destruction removal. The Foolish Burial effect is kinda cool, though not exactly impactful enough for the effort of getting this normal summoned monster onto the field. Let's just say that out of the entire story, this easily has the least interesting... arc. World Legacy World Armor is a level 7 monster with 2500 attack and defense, and when a monster is flip summoned, you can special summon this card from your hand. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can add a World Legacy card from your deck to your hand, and if this normal summoned or set card is on the field as a quick effect, you can target a face-up opponent's monster that was special summoned from the extra deck, and return both that monster and this card to the hand. This is a pretty good all-rounder. Crawlers are the preferred method of getting this card out of your hand because you know, flip monsters, but we've got a surprising number of other tools that can summon this, which means you get more World Legacy cards. The normal summon effect is also pretty powerful because this is a grand mole at quick effect speed, except without having to go to the battle phase, which means getting another chance to summon this and getting another search. Of our two tribute World Legacies, this is probably the least unwieldy, which is impressive considering how big it is. Do you know how much metal it would take to cover the whole world in armor? Yeah, uh, well, neither do I, but I'm sure it's a lot. World Legacy World Lance is a level 8 monster with 3000 attack and 0 defense, and monsters your opponent controls can't attack World Legacy monsters you control except this one. During damage calculation, if a Link monster battles another monster as a quick effect, you can discard this card so that the opponent's battling monster loses 3000 attack. And if any number of monsters are special summoned from the extra deck, special summon a World Legacy token to both players' field and defense position, which is a level 1 Dark Machine monster with zero attack and defense. Hey, that's the same kind of token you make with Gearsu the Orcus Mech Knight. Gotta love that attention to detail. This makes for a very funny hand trap against Link decks to beat basically anything in battle, but as it stands in the proper theme, it keeps your weaker legacies from being run over, including those little tokens. And while classically those tokens would be used for Link summoning purposes, they have a special purpose for us, Tribute Fodder. With these little gizmos, we now have an easier way to get our World Legacies Normal Summoned so their effects can be unlocked. That means you have everything you need to take full advantage of these cards, since everything you need is Right Spear. World Legacy World Wand is a level 8 monster with 500 attack and 2500 defense, and this normal summoned or set card cannot be destroyed by battle with a monster special summon from the extra deck. 
If this card is sent to the grave, you can special summon a World Legacy monster from your hand, and you can banish this card from your hand, then target one of your banished Orcist monsters and special summon it. Also, you can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn, except Dark Monsters. In Orcist, this made for another great way to get you material while recycling your banished Orcists to reset their effects. It worked particularly well with Orcus Nightmare, which funnily enough has its own form of battle destruction protection, as it could banish itself to send a dark monster from deck to grave, meaning you could send World Wand, which could in turn revive Nightmare. But if you were playing any other World Legacies, this would also get a monster out of your hand. And while a few work best when normal summoned, Armor will still get you a search, and Lance is another huge body with other utility. Heck, because the World Legacies are all Dark and Machine, they could be summoned even if any Orcist summon restrictions were in place. It might seem far-fetched that the Tuba Drone and the Percussion Zombie have anything to do with the planet's manifestation of ancient power, but that's the magic of lore. Our last two monsters are going to be some related links. Liv, the World Key Blade Master, is a Link 2 Light Cybers monster with 2000 attack, requiring any two monsters as material, but can only be Link summoned while you have a World Legacy card in your grave. During your main phase, you can set a World Legacy Spell or Trap card directly from your deck, but it cannot be activated this turn while you have no World Legacy monsters in your grave. And if this Link Summoned card is sent to the grave as Link Material, you can shuffle a card on the field into the deck. So everything about this card reads as the quintessential rung in the Link Climbing Ladder. As long as you're on some kind of World Legacy card, any two monsters turn into one that gets you a free card, and when Lib is used as Material, they double as Removal. In fact, it was such an innovation in Link Climbing technology that it was the preferred material to make a Link Cross with giving you two tokens and a way to spin a card on the field back into the deck. And since Link Cross is basically the poster child for how Link summoning ruined card advantage, well, that means that Lib isn't exactly in very good company. Though that does speak to their tremendous power, though I expect nothing less from such an accomplished Keyblade Master. World Gears of Theological Demiurgy is a Link 3 Dark Cybers monster with 3500 attack, requiring 3 level 5 or higher monsters as material. This card can't be used as Link material, and this Link Summoned card is unaffected by other monsters' effects. During your main phase, if this card was Link Summoned using 3 monsters that had different types and attributes on the field, you can destroy all other cards on the field. And if your opponent special summons any number of monsters from the extra deck, except during the damage step, you can special summon a World Legacy monster from your deck. Now, you might be wondering something strange about that board wipe effect. If this is a World Legacy card, why doesn't it work with the World Legacies, since they're all the same type and attribute? Well, the intention is to try and use the level 9 monsters that were associated with the villains that were released alongside this card. Nightmare Reincarnation Idli, World Legacy Guard Dragon Mardark, and Deus Ex Crawler, but they have a more general level 9 synergy instead of working with the World Legacies. Even the one with World Legacy in its name is much more of a Guard Dragon card than anything else. This means that Gears is much more suited as an extra deck tech pick for anything that has a wide range of types and attributes among its ranks, as well as high levels, but the payoff is more than worth it, giving you a repeatable way to clear out your opponent's field, though at the cost of your own but it's no slouch in World Legacies itself. Most of the monsters still qualify as material for the summon, has a ton of attack, is still unaffected by other monster effects, and acts as a way to pull World Legacy monsters out of your deck. It's pretty gimmicky, I admit, but sometimes you can't resist the demi urgy to play something janky. All right, that's all the monsters. Now it's time for the curated list of spells and traps. World Legacy Succession is a normal spell card that targets a monster in your grave and special summons it to your zone a Link monster points to. A very succinct effect, and also very powerful. I feel like this got added to every video about the World Legacy themes, and for good reason. They are all basically Link decks in one way or another, and with the number of searchers that can grab this card, it's a great Link extender or board builder, helping you to buy back powerful on-theme threats. In just about every way, it's a Monster Reborn reskin for the Link era. And as far as retrains go, this one makes for a pretty good successor to its legacy. 
World Legacy Clash is a quick play spell card that banishes a face-up monster you control until the end phase, then targets a face-up monster your opponent controls, and that target loses attack and defense equal to the original attack and defense of that banished monster. With a lot of our World Legacies, this is going to cause a huge debuff, and it's even better when you remember that while your monsters phase out temporarily, the debuff is permanent. And because of the way temporary banishing works, you can banish one of your normal summoned World Legacies, and they'll still maintain the status of having been normal summoned so they can still access those effects. Also, don't forget that this is completely generic, so if you have a theme that likes having their monsters banished, that's even more value. Oh, and because it's generic and is a card that modifies battle stats, you can actually flip this during the damage step, banishing a monster that's being attacked to save it, while still using up the attack of the attacking monster. It's pretty cool. There's a lot of utility bundled up in this little card, which clashes with its unassuming looks. World Legacy Monstrosity is a quick play spell card that lets you activate either one of two effects. You can special summon a level 9 monster from your hand, or you can target a level 9 monster you control to special summon from your deck two level 9 monsters, each with different types and attributes from that face-up targeted monster and with different names from each other, but those two monsters can't attack, also destroy them during the end phase. That's a real mouthful, but really, it boils down to either getting a level 9 out of your hand onto the field, or giving a level 9 you already have on field some friends. This is meant to work with the trio of level 9s I mentioned earlier in the video, Idli, Deus Ex, and Mardark, with that second effect basically making world gears all by itself. But considering how those three don't otherwise work too well with the world legacies, it'll be more useful in decks looking for level 9 synergies, like generators. It's also another reason why I'm glad VFD is banned. That was the real monster. The World Legacy is a continuous spell card that you can only control a single copy of. Each time any number of face-up level 5 or higher monsters are sent from the field to the grave, place a counter on this card for each card sent, and it can hold a maximum of 7. You can send this card with 7 counters to the grave to special summon a Cybers Link monster from your extra deck. This is another alternate way to summon out World Gears if you're going strictly by the lore, but we've actually got almost 100 targets for its effect, though thankfully most of the scarier targets only reach their full potential when actually Link summoned. I don't think you'll have to worry about them dragging Access Code Talker into the mix, and Avramax isn't anywhere near as good if it's not Link summoned, though a free Decode Talker Heat Soul wouldn't be half bad. The main problem here is setup. The World Legacy could add all 5 pieces of Exodia to your hand. The problem is that you have to summon and then send more level 5 monsters from the field to the grave than you actually have zones to fit them, so it's gonna be a long, involved process. Maybe one day we'll have a big Link Spam deck that uses high level monsters that are easy to summon, and the World Legacy ends up being a funny little extender you tack on to get some kind of toolbox effect. But until such times as the design team reaches into my little brain and pulls out that nugget of wisdom, the chapter of this card story is closed. World Legacy's Corruption is a continuous spell card, and once per turn, if a face-up Link monster you control is destroyed by a battle or leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you can special summon a World Legacy monster from your hand or deck in defense position, and you can only control a single copy of this card. This is largely meant to be used with Nightmares, an archetype primarily made of Link monsters, but everyone was running those at the time, so it does kind of fit with everything. And it does specifically summon World Legacies, so, you know, what's a guy to do? It works especially well with the kinds of decks that are already running World Legacies for their inherent synergies, letting you float into a potentially large body to help keep your field stocked up. It's hard to turn down a free World Lance, especially when it can help you rebuild your board with those sweet tokens. Though if you're one of those people who only play archetypes pure and think splashing is a moral failing, you might find this to be a corruption of their card pool. World Legacy Bestowal is a normal trap card that activates one of two effects. You either send a Link monster your opponent controls to the grave, or banish seven World Legacy cards from your grave to add a Cybers monster from your deck to your hand. Another really interesting card, and I'm not quite sure which decks this is supposed to go into. The closest thing to obvious would be as a side deck pick against decks with impactful Link monsters that resist removal, and need some kind of non-targeting, non-destruction removal that you don't feel bad waiting a turn to activate. In fact, I'm sure that's what most people would ever use this for, because the second effect would require you to be playing a Highlander World Legacy deck to fit that many cards in there. 7 is 17% of a 40 card deck. It's more cards than you'll see in your opening hand even if you go first, and let's just say that not every World Legacy card is a banger. And like, 
to do what? Search a single Cybers monster? I can pitch a card and get level 4 or lower ones off of Cynet Mining without having to wait a turn and some archetypes already have effects that'll search those higher leveled ones. I have a sneaking suspicion that no one's willing to run so many cards, including this one, as a way to search out Threshold Borg. Now, when it comes to flavor, this card is a 10 out of 10, no question. It's a choice between either throwing it all away and letting the pain of failure and loss consume everything, or using the World Legacy's power to try and forge a new future, even if it means consuming the power so you can never use it again thus showing probably the ultimate vulnerability of giving up reality shaping power. But you try to tell that to someone who's got three negates live and lethal on board. Turns out, you can't lure your way through a tournament. Trust me, I've tried. It's not pretty. World Legacy Cliffhanger is a normal trap card that can be activated when an attack is declared involving two Link monsters. Shuffle all monsters on the field and in the graves into the decks, and for the rest of this turn after this card resolves, neither player can Link summon. Um, okay, this doesn't really do anything. I just felt I had to include it because it doesn't really fit into any of the themes we've talked about beforehand. Like, Link monsters battling each other was a fairly common occurrence, and you could force this yourself, but because it's a trap card, it's far better for your opponent to walk into this. And yeah, I guess it's kinda cool to lock your opponent out of what was the most important extra deck summoning method, but it only effectively applying during main phase 2 isn't really a vibe. Like, they're gonna try and use all their resources during main phase 1 to beat you up, and part of that might be removal. So this card's fate isn't a cliffhanger, we know copies of these are gonna slowly crumble to dust in someone's closet. Sad, but true. World Legacy Landmark is a normal trap card that banishes a World Legacy monster from your hand or face up from your field, then target two monsters in your grave and special summon them, but they cannot attack this turn. Now that's a restriction that isn't much of an issue, because if you use this on your opponent's turn, it's not going to mean much. I kind of debated on this one to be honest, but technically, while a bunch of World Chalice monsters are in this card, it doesn't specifically have to work with them, and actually kind of makes running gigantic monsters a bit more palatable, because you can feed them to this and get more monsters out of it, which is kind of goofy. Sadly, it never really caught on, but I'm sure someday it'll see some niche play to facilitate a new fangled World Legacy deck, so playing this will be a landmark decision. World Reassembly is a normal trap card that special summons a World Legacy monster from your hand or deck, but destroys it during the end phase of the next turn. Yeah, just get any of those big bunglers onto the board, nothing to it. Summon Armor to get a search, summon Shield to get the Reborn online, summon Chalice to punish your opponent for summoning from the extra deck. The world's getting reset anyway, have fun, the world is your oyster. And while I still have a few lines of text left in this paragraph, I will take this time to remind you that those rocks do in fact have wireframes on them, so we are in the dual terminal right now. And if I hear another word about how it having Cleefort parts is a coincidence, you're going to coincidentally find all your garnets in your opening hand next regional. I am no longer asking you to care about lore, this is an order. World Legacy Trap Globe is a normal trap card that shuffles five of your World Legacy cards into the deck with different names from your banished zone, hand, grave, and or face upon the field. Accept copies of this card, then draw two cards. Aside from the fact that this is a trap card, this is basically Power Crept Pot of Avarice. You don't target any of the cards, you just choose which ones get shuffled on resolution, and because it can grab banished cards, your opponent can't just banish your fifth option to stop this. This means we can recycle chalices and wands that have been banished, which is really keen, as well as other powerful cards stuck in our grave, all while refilling our grip with a sweet plus one. I just wish we didn't have to wait to get that sweet, juicy card advantage. But I guess we don't really have time to worry about that because we have more pressing matters. They put Ib in the contraption! We gotta get her out of there. World Legacy Collapse is a continuous trap card, and it can banish a World Legacy monster from your hand, grave, or face-up field, then target a Link monster on the field, and it gains attack equal to the original attack of the banished monster, even if this card leaves the field. And if any number of Link monsters you control are destroyed by a battle or an opponent's card effect while this card is in your grave, you can banish this card to special summon a Cybers Link monster from your grave. Now, notably, World Gears is only unaffected by monster effects, so if you've got Collapse, you can start feeding it 
more and more world legacies until it just eclipses your opponent. And that boost is permanent, so that orb you've been pondering is just gonna keep getting bigger and bigger. And Collapse can even get you back gears if Collapse hits the grave before that Link monster, so it gets a second chance. And even though it'll lose its protections, it's still huge and can still get your world legacy monsters. Sure, it can summon any Cybers Link monster out of your grave, but let's be real, it's much more geared towards Demiurgy. Alright, so that's all the world legacy cards, but what do we do with them? Well, um... Yeah, this section is kind of a wash. These were always meant to have an overarching amount of synergy, but don't really have their own playstyle or win condition. Even Demiurge wants you to play different monsters than these to unlock its full power. Really, they're more of a bridge that other themes like Crusadia or Orcist can use to access cards they otherwise wouldn't have. And I cover all the relevant ones in their individual videos, so... Uh, let's go ahead and go to the Nova Scale. Novelty. An admittedly clunky term I like to use that comes up in lore archetypes is World Legacyfication, where multiple themes in a single storyline begin sharing pieces of support. You can see it in Vesis with the Kashtira Scareclaw and Tear Limit monsters, and you can see it in Albaz with cards like Sprite Smashers. And it all kind of originated in this era of the game, so World Legacies have got to get a 5 in novelty from me. Objectivity None of these cards individually are particularly busted. While they provide powerful and necessary functions to decks like World Chalice and Orcist, I'd be hard-pressed to say that any of them are individually game-changing, to say nothing of what their coordinated group can do. So I'm giving them a 5 here as well for being perfectly, palatably powerful. Versatility well, the whole point of these cards is to flex into a number of different decks, though the ones they work in are very narrowly the World Legacy lore themes, so they don't exactly have a wide range. Dark Machine support can kind of work with these as well, but it's not super explosive. So World Legacy is going to get a 3 from me in versatility. Awesomeness. Uh, this might be a hot take, but the World Legacy cards are kind of boring. The strong ones tend to be really strong and homogenized gameplay, at least for its time, and the mediocre ones might as well not exist. And while their individual effects tying into their connected archetypes is kinda cool from a lore perspective, none of them really enrich the story in any meaningful way. I'll give them points for being the glue that holds all this together, but for now, this is getting a 2 in awesomeness, though if my theories of a combined World Legacy Megazord ever come to fruition, and no, Avita does not count, expect this to go up a few points higher, because that would be rad. This puts World Legacy at a comfortable 15 out of 20 on the Nova scale, a score I did not expect for them to get going into this, to be honest. And that's all I have to say about World Legacy. I know things kind of got a little wonky there at the end, but if any archetype embodies the idea of being a tech pick as its gimmick, it's World Legacy. And it does mean a lot to be the cards that add flavor, texture, and function to a theme, even if it doesn't end up being very flashy. But I'm going to go ahead and do another of my classic called shots. The story is not over, not by a long shot. The blatant references to Dual Terminal without a cohesive connection is just begging for a follow-up, and I'd love to see how it all fits together. It may be wishful thinking, but if I go down as the guy who keeps coping that the story team will give us actual, concrete details about their world and won't just keep teasing us forever, well, I can think of worse legacies than that. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Do the world legacies have more depth than I've given them credit for, or are these rust buckets best kept where they are? And which one's your favorite? I feel like armor has the most interesting art, and I'm dying to know why its shield and spear landed so far away from it. Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, please make sure to like this video, subscribe so you don't miss an episode, and share this video with somebody you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode was brought to you in part by Dragon Shield. When you want to protect your cards with the power of Dragon Dragon Scales, get some sweet lore for them, and support the channel, check out my link in the description to get started. Today's episode is also brought to you by my lovely patrons, including the illustrious Quasar Commander Green Knight, Nebula Navigator's Third Dynasty, Ada Basilisk, Adam Zajdel, Andrew Newman, Avi Chali, Kane Senpai, Chibi Gohan, Christopher Fuss, Clockswork, Danny Bound, Dark Dragon X830, Eric, Aaron the World Breaker, Frankie, Garland Chaos, Genesis Yukio, Great Big Pillock, Hair Bear, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Howling Zangetsu, Hydrocraft 135, Iron Zero, Iskander 711, Mana Charge, Marion James E. Bacata, Marluxia is a Girl, Mega Combi, 
Molly Renata, Nathan Vig, Orozco 09096, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, RJ the Jank Monarch, Sammy Haim, Sir Knight JCB, Skybuster Leo, Sophie, apparently, The Wizard Moose and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders Almento 5010, A Random Pup, Ariel Kersey, Beluga Masta, Blue Gem, Chaz Ghost, Corbinisms, Drakenwald, Drake and SpongeBob be like, you used to call me on your shell phone, Dripfed Tar, Eki Bullock, Eva Padilla, Hike Boyajian, Herbal D, In Blink, Jester Designs, Kale the Dragon, Carp, Kivon Public, King Scarlet Yu Gi Oh!, Lemon Yu Gi Oh!, Lord Whoop De Doo!, Manga Pages, Matt Simmons, Michael Shimabukuro, Nitromo, Ruxith Sarani, Shizuka Nijimura, Stephen Williamson, The Legendary Raven, Tucker Ordorn, Venusian Teapot, and Zell Drekka, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. If you'd like to be a part of these credits, get early access to videos, determine what videos I make, and many more benefits, it would mean the world to me if you check my Patreon page in the description or consider joining as a YouTube member. And if you'd like to take this journey back from the beginning, check out this playlist of all the World Legacy Archetype videos. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye And while I still have a few lines of text left in this paragraph, I will take this time to remind you that those rocks do in fact have wireframes on them, so we are in them. Uh.